This is the Vulture Equipment Works Cholera Mark I. Uh, the company is up to the Mark III, which is sold out. I was just on their website. I guess they're in the process of moving. Uh, and uh, so you can't really get one of these right now. But uh, I think this is a really interesting knife. And a friend of mine at work got one a few years back. And he is not a knife junkie. But uh, I was I was excited and shocked to hear when he said, hey, Bob, I just got a new outdoor knife for uh, all the Boy Scouting activities. And I said, oh, what is it? And I, I was shocked when he said, it's a vulture. Have you heard of it? And I was had just heard of it. It had just come out and uh, I had seen pictures of it and loved it and was thrilled to hear that he gotten this. So just the other day, it uh, I was reminded that I, I never actually got my hands on it and never got to take a look at it. So I asked him to bring it in. We made a little swap at work and uh, here it is. So I just wanted to show it off. And uh, it's going to be hard giving this one back because it is a really great knife and a great design. Uh, this one, this is their Mark I. And um, I haven't seen anything official that says that it was made by Tops, but I would bet the farm on it. Um, even just by looking at the, the font they use on the billboarding on this side, uh, this is just a Tops knife uh, build through and through. Um, you've got the linen micarta, which I, I know the company Vulture uses on the knives they manufacture, so that's not completely unique. But anyone who knows what a Topps knife looks like and knows how Topps puts a blade together will recognize this. Um, and, and I'm going to say that this is manufactured by Topps in the Mark I, because if not, uh, they really bit off the stilo of Topps, and I just don't think that's the case. I think they came up with a really, really great knife design, and, uh, you know, before maybe they got all the wind in their sails, went to a really, really great uh, American manufacturer to have it, uh, to have the first iteration of it done. And uh, so in any case, that's, that's what we're dealing with. This is a beautiful and very well thought out knife. Vulture Equipment Company, I, I haven't seen much about them, but I looked at a video online with their uh, proprietor, William Egbert Jr., and he is talking about the design philosophy behind their knives. They also make rifle slings and uh, lubrication for firearms and just uh, various expedition level equipment is, is how they word it. And uh, if this is any indication, uh, you know, I, I believe them. <laughs> uh, this is a really stout and sturdy um, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick slab of what I'm assuming is uh, uh, 154 cm because I'm pretty sure even though there's some staining on there that this is a stainless steel uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Topps Knives usually uses 1095 but then they have uh, various uh, ways to treat it with their high traction coating or that um, acid rain wash thing that they use uh, to protect the high carbon steel from the elements. This doesn't have either of those. I, I'm pretty sure this is 154 because uh, as Vulture Equipment Company um, moved forward through time and started manufacturing their own knives in the Mark II and the Mark III, and they have another knife called the Talon, uh, they were choosing 154. And 154 is a favorite uh, stainless blade steel of Topps knives. So th this is my thinking. There's not much information about this out there, so I'm just kind of cobbling together what I think is the is the case. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. Um, as I mentioned, you got these thick micarta handles with the uh, with a nice thick G10 liner. Frequently, you'll see the G10 liners here uh, being a little bit thinner than this. Um, you get a really, really nice grip with this. Oops, sorry, I could just kick the tripod here. You get a really nice grip with this. It really fills the hand. You have these nice uh, finger wells here, these choils. Uh, but they're not they are they're not forcing you to commit too much. You know, sometimes you see the grooves in a handle, and if your hand isn't perfectly sized to fit those grooves, they become uncomfortable. Maybe uh, the peaks poke into your hand or whatever. Uh, this to me is extremely comfortable. And in watching this video, I was talking uh, to you about with um, William Egbert, the designer and proprietor of Vulture Equipment uh, Works. He talks about the handle design. And uh, by the way, I love the massive lanyard, 
lanyard hole. He highlights how it's got a rounded end. And um, I appreciate that because, you know, he's talking about how uh, a sharp and pokey sort of skull crusher end that you see on a lot of sort of military style knives um, that come out by various manufacturers can actually really be kind of dangerous. Uh, uh, you fall down a hill, it pokes into your ribs, or um, for me, I don't like those uh, pointed pommels because I like to put my cap, cap the pommel with my thumb when I have it in reverse grip and uh, that just makes it uncomfortable. So uh, I think a lot of thought went into the design of this knife. Uh, apparently he's been working on the design for many, many years and uh, just keeps tweaking it and tweaking it. And, and, uh, and there you have it. So something interesting about this knife, uh, my friend Greg got this as a camp knife. To me, it's, a, it's kind of an aggressive tactical knife, I gotta say. And there are a couple of reasons why I say so. First of all, the point is very acute, very nice point for thrusting. And of course, thrusting can come in handy, you know, out in the out of doors. I'm not a huge, uh, you know, outdoorsman, as you know, but uh, I could see using this point to make a, uh, to drill with, you know, if you, if you need to, you know, you're making a trap or you're making one of those, um, one of those fire things where you go like this and there's like the bow, a bow fire drill whatever it's called, uh, I could see using this, this nice tip to, uh, to drill holes in, in materials, wood and what, what have you. But the swedge here, which I absolutely love, this swedge is zero ground. It, it's like the swedge on the back of a Bowie knife. It's not, it doesn't have the secondary cutting edge. You're not slicing apples with it, but you could split skin with this no problem if, if you're in some sort of a, you know, uh, situation where you're using your knife in a defensive situation, you could use this as a percussive back cut and just split skin with it. It is very optimized for a um, tactical application here. Whereas most, you know, uh, dedicated outdoors knives are going to have, here, are going to have, you know, backs like this on the, on the SE, for instance, uh, where if you're using a, a wooden baton to baton through your firewood to make kindling. I don't know why I use this, but um, this zero ground swedge is going to just destroy your baton in no time. Also, uh, frequently, you know, if you have to push on the back of the blade or something like that, you want something that's not sharp on the back edge. So when I just got this in hand yesterday and pulled it out, I was like, oh, that is sweet. Because you know me, I'm you know what I go for probably. And uh, I would always prefer a sharpened swedge because if there's a swedge there in the first place, that means they're trying to optimize it for thrusting. And if you're optimizing it for thrusting, you may as well also optimize it for a back, a back flick. Or what do they call that? A, uh, a back cut. Say someone's coming in at you and they're trying to stab you. This is all theoretical knife dueling stuff. Okay, I'm not saying that uh, this has ever even happened in reality, but say uh, the knife is coming in and thrusting and you use your knife as a as a back flick, boom, that gouge, that splitting of the skin is going to really be horribly painful and it's going to inflict a lot of damage, uh, much more so than just a percussive hit with the flat of a spine. All right, I've gone too long on this swedge, but I was surprised to, surprised and thrilled to see it there. Um, because this is, as they call it, expedition grade, which also means military grade, you know, if you will. And, and to see it's, to see some weapon-like considerations added to it, I just like, what can I say? Uh, so you have wonderful jimping here. This is very, uh, topsy jimping, tops-esque jimping, if you will. And, uh, it's very grippy, very nice, and really adds to this, uh, to the sense of control you get from this nice fat handle. Uh, let's see, how long is this blade? This The cutting edge here is one, two, three, four, what? Yeah, about four and a half. Wait, wait, am I counting correctly? One, two, three, four and a half, almost, almost five inches uh, of cutting edge. And the blade is about five, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. That's about five inches long. Jeez, man. Terrible at math always, but even with this grid in front of me, I have to count and use my fingers. Um, so it's a uh, 
nearly Scandi ground, Scandinavian ground blade, meaning it, it, uh, the cutting edge comes to a nearly zero, uh, zero ground edge where the bevel is the main cutting edge. But as you can see here, and as Tops has done a lot in the past, where do I, uh, they, they put the Scandi grind and then a small secondary edge, uh, to, to strengthen it a little bit. You might sacrifice ever so slight amount of, uh, cutting power with that, but I mean, I guess you'd really have to be, uh, oh, man, my friend keeps that sharp. He's an engineer, so of course he keeps it sharp. But, uh, so you've got that Tops style Scandi ground blade with a secondary edge, a very, very small secondary bevel, which makes for great cutting. Now, here's something I think is really cool and a real, uh, I, I think it's great that Vulture Equipment Works designed this in here, and, and I wish more companies would do that. But they took the sharpening choil and zero ground that sharpening sharpening choil, so it's perfect for cord cutting. I haven't tried this yet, but I'm I'm assuming that it's perfect for cord cutting. You know, if the knife <laughs> if the knife gets totally dull or whatever, uh, look at this. All right. Okay, so maybe it's not perfect for cord cutting, but this uh, if you get in there with a little circular file which this is not my knife. I'm not going to do that, but uh, I highly recommend, Greg, if you're watching this, get in there with a little circular file. Put Just take that edge and sharpen it a little bit more, and you'll have a perfect dedicated cord cutting portion of your, of your blade. I'm going to try that one more time and risk embarrassment. All right, well, probably if I wasn't on camera, it might be, uh, it might be something I could do, but uh, you could fit 550 cord in there and push through it. This is 320 cord, I guess. And uh, oddly enough, uh, pretty strong stuff. So I love this aspect. I've designed this into several knives that I've drawn out, thinking it would be very cool. Uh, and I, I like it here. Um, one legal concern is this hole. <laughs> is Spyderco going to sue them out of existence for putting a hole in their blade? I don't know. I don't know, but I love the way it looks. And of course, removing three sixteenths of an inch of steel in a, what is that, about a half, uh, a three quarters inch diameter is going to lighten it slightly. I have not taken off the handle scales and will not because it's not my blade, but I'm curious if it's hollowed out at all. I, something tells me it might be because it's balanced very nicely like a fighting knife right here at the first finger choil. And uh, to do that, I think if this were totally filled in with steel, I think it would be tail heavy, but I don't know. I could be, I could be wrong about that. Though it's extremely rare, extremely rare that I'm wrong about anything. Just ask my wife, she'll tell you. Uh, made in the USA, presumably tops for the Mark I here because of everything I mentioned, that, that sort of italicized uh, Helvetica font, which is so generic that tops likes to use. Um, but go on the uh, Vulture website and check out their Mark III. Now they're up to the Mark III. It's you know, they have a, a number of different uh, color combinations or, or, or setups here. And, uh, you know, it's of their own manufacture now. All right, let me just roll in some size comparisons of similar style knives. And uh, so you can see, see what we're dealing with here. Uh, the first one that popped into my mind is the uh, Topps Knives Tex Creek. One of my one of my absolute favorite outdoors knives. Now this is one of the few fixed blades that I have that isn't actually a combat knife, um, because you know that's just how my tastes run. This one actually gets used. The combat knives are all I don't want to call them safe queens because they come out a lot, but I don't use them much. This one, as you can see, gets a lot of use out when I'm out in the yard. Um, by the way, tops, how cool would it be if you zero ground the swedge on this? I know a lot of people who have the Tex Creek and use it uh, the way it should be, would say, Bob, that's a stupid idea. It's not a fighting knife, but still, I think it'd be cool. Uh, this one is, well, this is the 1095, I think, with the acid wash, acid rain wash. So it's a little bit smaller than that. Let's see, what else do we have? We have the very classy and upscale Bark River Knives Boon 2, a classic American outdoors uh, knife design with that clip point and the stacked leather handle and uh, the um, 
convex edge is just insanely sharp. Yes, yes, I took this out and actually used this. I'm, I am, all my, I have a few Bark River knives. They're all big bowies and I don't use them for anything. I want to keep them pristine. But this one, when I bought it, I decided I would use this and take it outside and really see how Bark River knives perform. I know they're excellent knives by reputation, by people who actually use them. So I decided if I'm going to use any of my Bark River knives, it will be this one. Uh, for a classic size comparison, or a couple of uh, pretty common knives or knives that a lot of people have. Here it is with the, I love this knife, the Buck 119, which is now out in S35 VN blade steel and green micarta, which is gorgeous. Uh, Gideon's Tactical has a nice video up on that, where he's out camping in the Rockies, making everyone else who lives in suburbia feel jealous. Um, let's see. Oh. Trying to be all neat, and there I, there I go. Let's see. Oh, and here it is with, an, with a very famous and well-loved outdoors knife, the Cold Steel SRK. So these are, I guess I pulled out knives that are all a little bit smaller, or a little bit larger than the Vulture Cholera. Interesting name, Cholera. And uh, your first reaction might be to think that it's someone trying to just be um, controversial with the name, but... Uh, the gentleman who designed this, William Egbert Jr., explains that cholera lives in the belly of vultures and allows vultures to eat carrion <laughs> without without dying or, you know, barfing all the time. And that the cholera is actually quite important in their gut for, for their survival. And of course, vultures are very important to the environment and the ecosystem for everyone's survival. So, um, wow, interesting choice of names, I think. Um, here, one last comparison. I just pulled it out before. Uh, here it is with an SE Hunglist, or no, no, this is the uh, the RTAC 2, a well-used RTAC 2. That's split a lot of like uh, family um, fire pit wood. So, all right, well, oh, before I leave, before I stop going on at length. I want to show you the sheath, which is all tops all day with this clip and, uh, you know, the rotating clip. They they have migrated away from the metal a bit and have gone with the plastic. And as you can see here, this is quite clearly a tops um, sheath. A very nice addition is the ferro rod, uh, ferro rod holder on the, on the back. And then you have, I guess this is not just ferro. There are a couple I'm not sure what these other ones are, but uh, you have a 90 degree spine, not here, but maybe that's why it's a zero ground swedge, I was wondering, for hitting that the, the striker. This feels slightly chamfered. It's not exactly 90 degrees. Uh, I do believe you could, you could get it off the jimping here, though. Uh, the jimping seems kind of sharp, um, or I guess you could do it off the blade in a real pinch, but maybe that's what this is for. Actually, that's what that's for. That's what that's for. That is not for cutting cord. That is for striking the ferro rod because it fits perfectly in there. So that's a presumption, but anyway. So there you have it. Thank you, Greg, for loaning this to me. I love this knife and um, I will give it back to you, I promise. Uh, this is the Vulture Equipment Works Cholera Mark I, made by Tops. They are now on the Mark They've made the Mark II and they've made the Mark III uh, in their own facility, their own manufacturing. But this first one, definitely it tops. And uh, what a beautiful design. Nice work. I hope to see them back. Uh, I guess, like you said, like I said, when you go to their website, you see that they're moving. I don't know how old that is, but hopefully they're still planning on coming back and making more of these because I think it's a really cool knife. And I think it would make a wonderful addition to the DeMarco Knife Museum. All right, everybody, thanks for watching and take, a little, take care.